Hey everyone, Disturbed Shadow here, back to bring you another review of an album that came out 10 years ago. Today we're going to be talking about the album that came out back on June 14th, 2005, which is exactly 10 years ago today, and that is the fourth album from the industrial metal band Static X entitled Starter War. Now, I just want to preface this by saying, just like City of Evil, this is an album that I got into way back in the day when I first started getting into metal. Thanks to the game Need for Speed Most Wanted because the song Skinny Man, which is track number six, was featured on the soundtrack. So it was one of the first albums that really got me into metal, so it has a special place in my heart for that same reason that City of Evil did. So let's just jump right in and talk about some of the cool tracks on this album. First track I want to talk about is the opening track, The Enemy, which just has this really fast, very percussive uh, intro to it. And it just, it's a very great way to set up what this album is doing. It just has a great, fun feel to it, and it's just a great intro track. Track number two, I'm the One, which is a personal favorite Static X track of mine. It's just got a great feel to it. it just It's simple on the guitars and the bass and the drums and stuff like that. But it's just got this really nice rhythm to it. And that's lyrical content-wise, I really enjoy what's happening there. It's just, it's just really fast-paced and it's a really awesome song. I just love everything about this song. And it, like I said, it's one of my personal favorite Static X tracks. It's just got so much good stuff happening. Track number three, which is the title track, Start a Warus. This song is interesting because in the in the verses, um, Wayne sort of does this like almost whispery, raspy kind of vocal thing, and it just sounds really cool. And it's just something that stood out to me on that one that I just wanted to mention. Track number four, Pieces. This is another one with a really uh, fast-paced drumming and stuff like that. But what really stood out about this track is that it has a guitar solo, which is not something that Static X has really had previously. It's the only track on the album that features that. And it's the first, I believe it's the first song they ever wrote that had a guitar solo in it. Obviously, in some of their later stuff, they threw in some guitar solos, but that's what makes it stand out on this album, since it's the only track that does that. Track number five, Dirt House, which is another one of the singles, the other one being I'm the One, that was released off of this album. It just has a really great feel to it. And it's really just the same simple guitar riff constantly throughout the whole song. But there's some other uh, lead guitars and stuff layered on top of it and some cool uh, like sound effects and programming and stuff like that to keep things interesting. And then the drums really just do a great job of keeping the pace on the song. It's just got a really great vibe to it. And what really stands out is uh, Wayne's vocal performance when he's alternating between these like high-pitched wails and these more singing type of vocal delivery. It's just a great alternation between the two. It's just a really fun song to listen to. Track number six, Skinny Man, which I previously mentioned was the first Static X song I heard. It was on the Need for Speed Most Wanted soundtrack, and it's one of the songs that got me into metal. So it was always going to be my uh, favorite uh, Static X song of all time. It's just got a great feel to it. It starts off with this like sort of simplistic uh, guitar part, and then a little more complex lead guitar part comes in over that. That's, I really like the the, uh, the lyrics and the vocals on this album. It's just got a great, I mean, on this track, it just has a great feel to it. And then after the uh, second chorus, it pulls back to, and it features just the drums and the bass and uh, mostly uh, computerized sound effects and stuff like that. And then Wayne comes in with these really harsh but really whispered vocals and just got such intensity to them. I just love the way this song comes together. This has a great sound to it. Track number seven, Just In Case, is another one that sort of features, just like the, the, the title track, Start A War, a more raspy sort of vocal delivery in the verses. And then it really has a powerful uh, chorus that it's sort of anthemic and makes you want to sing along with it. And then there's great guitars and bass and... Uh, drums and sound effects layered in on those choruses to just give it that much more oomph and just comes together really nicely and I really like what this song is doing. Track number eight, Set It Off. It's another personal favorite of mine off this album. It's one of my personal favorite Stack X songs. It might be my second favorite next to uh, next to Skinny Man. I just really love the, the main guitar riff in this song. It just has a great sound to it and it combos really nicely with the bass and it just produces this really heavy tone. And then the bass really stands out in the uh, verses, and everything comes together really nicely for these really powerful uh, choruses. And I really love Wayne's vocal performance in the uh, in the chorus on this song. It's, there's so much emotion behind it, it's so much power. It's just 
the way he's just wailing and belting out these lyrics, it just sounds so good. And I just love the way it all comes together. One thing I do want to mention about this song, which is kind of cool, is that the, the play an instrumental version of it on the, my local radio station when the DJs are talking sometimes, which is something that, or my local rock station, I want to say, the one that I personally listen to when I'm in the car, which doesn't happen that often, but I, I do enjoy the fact that they play this song because it's one of my personal favorite uh, Stack X songs. Moving on, track number nine, I Want to Fucking Break It, which is just, just a heavy song in general. It's just, just fast and in your face. There's nothing else, much else to it. One thing I did think was funny is that there's this like, almost comical sounding brass bit in the beginning, and then each time it jumps into the chorus, it's just, it's just kind of funny and just completely different than what the rest of the, the instruments are doing. It's just kind of funny. Not much else to say about this song. Track number 10, Night Terrors. It's another awesome song. It's just got this really heavy, chuggy riff. And then this this song, unlike a lot of the other ones on the album, is mostly singing. There's not a whole lot of screaming happening in this song. And it shows that Wayne can do some pretty good uh, clean vocals as well. Another song that appears on the radio, actually. Uh, I know this is a lot, but they play an instrumental version of this song uh, just before commercial breaks and coming back from commercial breaks. On the, the the sports talk radio station that my dad listens to when we're in the car together. I just think that's just so funny. It's just this really heavy metal song in there. But it, I just wanted to mention that because I think that's something that is kind of funny. Anyway, moving on. Track number 11, Otsugo Amigo, which is a really fucking weird song. I know I uh, believe on their other albums they have other Otsugo songs. I'm not really sure the story behind that, but... Anyway, this song just has this really weird stuff going on. It's really creepy and weird sounding. Not much else to it. It's just, it's just very interesting, and it's not really. It's really hard to describe exactly how it sounds. So you kind of have to listen to it by itself. But it's just weird stuff happening on this track. Moving on, track number twelve, "My Damnation," which has another really uh, great song. It has this really standout guitar riff that really gets in your head, and then there's just lots of. Uh, a lot more uh, singing than on some of the other tracks, and then uh, loud noises. Sorry about that. And it just combos really nicely with uh, with all the drums and uh, bass that's happening. It does this really nice sound to it. So a really great way to sort of end the album. Even though it's not technically the closer, I sort of view it as the, the last vocal track. So it's the one that you really want to pay attention to. And there's just great stuff throughout the whole song, and it's the perfect way to end the vocal tracks on the album. And finally, track number 13, Brain Fog, which is this really cool, like, techno-y kind of sounding uh, song. It's a lot more industrial type of song. And it sort of fits in uh, as with that style that, Shadow, uh, that Static X describes himself as, which is Evil Disco. It just has that feel to it. It's a really short song, there's lots of cool drums and guitar bits in it, it's just a really interesting track. And then it ends with a hidden track which is a, a, a version of Atsugo Amigo without any of the guitars, drums, and bass in it. It's just, just the vocals except for a bit of drums at the end, but it makes the song that much more creepier just having the vocals. It's just, just hearing Wayne wailing out these lyrics, it just sounds hilarious. And then, of course, there's the part in the middle where it's all in Spanish, and if you read the English translation, I believe the word fuck is used like 20 different times. This is hilarious. And just hearing that bit on its own is just so weird and kind of trippy. Anyway, that wraps up my discussion of all the tracks on the album. Some stood out more than others, but they're all pretty solid. Well, let's move on to the sound of the band themselves. First, I want to talk about uh, Wayne Static on vocals because obviously the band is named after him, so he's sort of the focal point. And really, on these songs, the vocals is where it's at, where it's very, uh, where everything else is sort of pulled back and simplistic, and you really get the focus on the vocals. He's got a great range. He gets really high up there uh, with the high screams, and he can get these good growls too. Like on Otago Amigo, there's some really low growly type of stuff that he doesn't do on some of the other tracks. And then he's got a pretty solid singing voice, as you can see on My Damnation and uh, Skinny Man and on Night Terrors, where they're a lot more singing focused than some of the other tracks. And just, he's got a really unique sound to his voice, and it's not quite matched. 
on on anything else. It just has such a unique sound that you always know that it's him singing. Now we'll talk about uh, Trip Eisen and Wayne on the guitars. Obviously, this is uh, the last appearance of Trip Eisen because he had those uh, uh, sexual assault charges, and then they didn't want anything to do with him after that. So they sort of uh, got rid of him. Uh, he had already recorded all his guitar parts for the album, so they left them on there and didn't re-record re 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 them when Koichi came back. But uh, he wasn't really featured in the promotion of the album since it hadn't been quite released yet when he left, I believe. I'm not quite sure on that. Anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about the actual guitar work from the two of them. There's lots of great guitar moments. With this style of music, it's not really a focus on the crazy guitar solos and shredding, stuff like that. It's a lot more pullback and simplistic, but the riffs are definitely there on a lot of the songs, like on um, Set It Off of My Damnation, where it's just these really catchy riffs. But a lot of times it's more pullback and simplistic, where it's just a few notes, like on Dirt House or Skinny Man. But it works really nicely for what they're trying to do on this album, and for what they generally do as a band, where it's not really focused on the technical side of things. It's just simple but catchy guitar riffs that pull you into the songs. And they definitely achieved that here, so props to the two of them for doing a good job on the guitars. Tony Campos on the bass. There's lots of great bass moments where the... Well, overall the bass is turned up nice and loud. This is something I always like to hear. But there are many moments where the bass sort of goes off and does its own thing. Like on uh, My Damnation, and uh, especially on Set It Off, and uh, uh, Just In Case as well, where the bass really stands out. And there's also this moment on uh, Night Towers where the bass just gets really loud and heavy and it's doing some cool, interesting things. So overall, he's doing a great job on the guitar, I mean, on the bass, even though it's mostly just following along. He's adding that really heavy bass tone to, to thicken things up and just give all the riffs that extra oomph behind them. It's just a, a really good job on the bass overall. It blends in nicely with everything. Nick Oshiro on the drums. I believe this is his first appearance with the band, even though he's been touring them for a few years already. And the drums are super solid on this album. The, the production on them has got this really heavy sound to them. And there's just a lot of power behind the, the double bass and the snare hits as well. It just has a lot of power in the drums. And there's a lot of technical bits on the drums, like on uh, Night Terrors especially, where the, the, the drumming really stands out. And there's some moments that set it off where the drumming uh, is more pullback and simplistic, but it works really well for the song. And it blends in nicely with all the, the very catchy guitar riff on that song. So there's a lot of stuff like that throughout the whole album that really catches my attention. I was like, oh, there's cool stuff happening on the drums in this part. And it just blends in really nicely with what everyone else is doing. So these four guys, oh, actually I want to mention Koichi Fukuda, who's their original guitarist who came back halfway through the recording of this album. He did not perform any of the guitars, but he did all the, the programming for the album, so all the cool sound effects and stuff like that. He added all those in. And there's a lot of moments like the, like I mentioned on like Skinny Man and Set It Off and on Night Terrors and on uh, Just In Case where the uh, synths and sound effects and samples and all that stuff just have this really great sound. So he did a good job of putting all that kind of stuff in the different tracks to give it that cool sort of electronic-y sound which is something you really want in an industrial metal band. So, good job to him. So these five guys really produced a very nice sounding album. So wrapping up, I think this is my personal favorite Static X album. While most people think their debut album was Concert Death Trip is their best, many of them do rate this as the second best album just behind it. I just really love all the different stuff going on in this album. It just has a great sound to it. And that's not just because it was the one of the albums that got me into metal in the first place. I just like it overall. It's a really great sounding album. And I think that uh, Wayne's vocals are a little bit better than they were on Wisconsin Death Trip. And that really uh, helps improve it for me. It sort of gives it a nice blend of the, the more melodic side that they do sometimes and the, the really heavy in your face sort of industrial side that you see on uh, Wisconsin Death Trip. So they blended those styles in together nicely to really get this all encompassing album that I think is one of the definitive Static X albums. And it's a, it's a great uh, piece in Wayne's legacy, obviously, since he uh, passed away last year. So I think this is one of his best works. So anyway, I don't want to keep rattling on about this stuff, so I'm going to wrap up there. Definitely check this album out if you haven't yet, because I think it is a great way to get into Static X if you are not a fan of the band already or just haven't heard of them before. 
So definitely get, check it out. Anyway, if you like this review, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more, obviously. And then I will see you guys in the next video. And I will be continuing on with the, the Avenged Sevenfold discography very soon as well. So uh, a couple more uh, anniversaries are coming up. So I will see you guys then.